Welcome to part two of Logic Drum Machine Designer. In this next part, I'm gonna show you how to take the things that you use in Splice and actually program them in different ways and bust them so you can get the maximum effect out of them. Now we're gonna talk about how to play this. I'm gonna look and see what I have here. So I've got a couple kicks and I've got these snares and then I've got these hi-hats that are exclusively grouped. That way they shut each other off when another sample plays in. Then I've got these little extra samples that I got out of that loop. Now you'll notice I've gotten rid of that reverb and I've gotten rid of that delay. The reason why I did that is because once again, I use a tabs format. I like to have everything normalized in my mix. I have over here on my auxiliaries and below kind of where my face is here, I have my buses. And so I don't want to start putting logic things into that. The problem is if you're using logic samples for this, you're going to see a whole lot of effects, a whole lot of buses, and a whole lot of things that you don't necessarily want. So let's just stop here. You are the artist. You are the designer. Why are you going to settle for a bunch of plugins that Logic thinks that you want? A lot of them are even turned off or just not even used. They're just like flat at default. Why do we want to do this to ourselves? We don't. You're the designer. Make sure that you design in your way, not in some programmer in Cupertino's way. Be an artist. So let's go back to this. There's two ways to play this. So I go... So I'm just messing with it right now. I want to actually marry these two snares together. There is no way to have one sample fire two samples in this. These are individual plugins using the quick sample feature, which is kind of a thing I don't love about this. Instead of just having it all go into one plugin and being able to route it in that plugin, now I'm having to use all of these separate quick samples. Honestly, if we're going to be honest, it's not the best way to do this. Do you have more control? Yes, but if you just made the plugin a little bit better where you can do all that control inside of it without having seven instances, eight instances of a plugin, I think that would be a far better way to go. What can I tell you? This is what they gave us. You will notice if you are on the stack itself, everybody plays in the area that's supposed to play in. Now, if I want to mess with this, if I want to fire two snares at the same time, I'm going to have to go into the individuals and double up on these since there is no way to group them together to play at the same time. Let's get our tempo at 90 beats per minute and let's go ahead and start with just a kick. But what I'm going to show you is if you're actually on the track stack itself, it'll only fire at that one area and the proper pitch that the sample was at. But if you want to tweak it a little bit, you can go down to the actual kick and you'll notice if I hit that C1 here, it's much higher. So if I got to go down further, whoa. So now if I want to go lower, I can do this just using the actual track and I have the whole range. That wouldn't be very effective. Find the tone you want. So let's go ahead and record that. Go ahead and capture that. Now I'm going to put a little swing on this whole thing. So go ahead and change this to get a little bit of swing. Let's do a D swing here. So we'll do a D swing on the whole thing, but then we're going to also make sure that we have that D swing happening on that region. So let's feel what that feels like. All right. Okay, now what I want to do is I actually want to double up these snares. Now, sure, I could play it here, two fingers. Or what I can do is I can just do it one finger and record it down here. So it's just a different way to do it. You can do it with the two fingers using that stack or you can actually go to the actual tracks, start messing with the pitch a little bit. You have a little bit more play on it. Maybe you want to actually do a high and a low together. So it just gives you a little bit more play on it. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll capture that 
And I'm gonna go ahead and loop this. Let's go ahead and cut this off here, shorten it and just loop this by option clicking it and just making it longer. Now I'm gonna go to my hi-hats. Now in this case, I want that feature where you can choke the hi-hat. I'm gonna go ahead and program my hi-hats up here. Let's get these off here. So now, go ahead and just add that in. This is a little bit low for me. I'm gonna, before I program these, I'm gonna just tweak these a little bit. So I'm gonna tweak these right ahead in the drum machine designer and I'm gonna get this pitch up a little bit on this. That's a little bit better right there. So let's go ahead and program this using the stack instead of the actual track. So let's try that. Let's just say I like that. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead, use that smart quantization so I can get those little trills and stuff that I did. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, so I like the second half of this. I think the first half kind of sucked. Go ahead and cut that off and just make this our hi-hat part. So now I'm using these custom splice samples. I'm messing with it in different ways. What I've done here is use the features of the drum machine designer to work my hi-hats, but I've used the quick sample tracks to actually program the snare and the kick. So what do we got here? Nice. Okay, so now if I want to explore these other things I put in. Now I could do them in the drum kit designer or I can find them down here. Let's see what we got here. All right, let's say I like that. Let's get these together. Okay, so let's say I like that, and I would actually move this over here a bit, because I don't want that to come until later. So now you can really see we can tweak this the way that you want to. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So one of the things that we're gonna do is, we've put on our splice sounds, we've done it the way that we wanted to do it. But what I really wanna do is, I want to get the kick in one bus, I wanna get the snares in another bus, and I wanna get the hi-hats in another bus. And so what I can do is I could use my first three available buses, and all I need to do is is on the track level, not the stack level, I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey, don't go to side chain three, go to drums for the kick. And I can just rename this down here, go kick. And then for this, these two snares, I'm gonna say, hey, I don't wanna go to side chain three, I wanna go to loops. I'm gonna call loops snare. And then for my hi-hats, which are right here, I'm gonna go ahead and take these and send them to my third open bus, which is orc, but I'm gonna call that hats. So now when you actually mess with this, you can see. So here's the kick, the snare, and the hats. So now I can tweak them individually the way I see fit. So if I want to go ahead and put something like, let's go ahead and listen to these two. So let's say I want to go ahead and put a stereo delay, which I have in my effects too, right up here. Now I'm gonna just throw a little bit of that on there. Again, you get your own effects the way you see fit. Don't settle for what they're giving you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and tweak this because I want it to be fast. So let's go ahead and change this to eighths and sixteenths. Nope, let's try the dotted instead. So 
So I want it to be way more subtle than that. I'm going to take that level down here. Nice. Now, if I'm going to be an organizational person, which I usually am, what I'm going to do is these splice names sometimes can be very cumbersome. So I'm just going to replace them with their own names. So kick, we're going to say snare thin, let's call it, and then snare thick. And this is CLHH, -H, that's closed hi-hat. This is hi-hat pedal, and this is open a hi-hat and what you can do here is actually go ahead and just name them so you kind of know what you're doing here so you don't get these big ugly names going on what we're doing here is actually a little bit more custom because we're able to put things in the way that we want to put them in it's really not rocket science but what you're doing here is you have the control by deciding what effects you want on things and if you want to compress the kick or if you want to compress the snares together to get a gluey sound to them you can do that on the bus level and have a little bit more control that's it for part two of Logic Drum Machine Designer. In part three, we're gonna look at some of the pitfalls that Drum Machine Designer has. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button, click the bell icon to be notified of future videos, and follow me on Instagram at GGabrielMusic. See you on part three of Logic's Drum Machine Designer.